Happy Cinco de Mayo, folks. Welcome back to the random video blog where every single Friday I gram Jesus and Matthews run down my rambling wrestling thoughts, share a few stories, etc., etc. And here today, I am giving my four review of AJ Lee's, AJ Mendez, AJ Brooks, whatever you want to call her, her recent autobiography, um, Crazy Is My Superpower, How I Triumphed by Breaking the Rules, Breaking Bones, and Breaking Hearts. Again, not exactly in that order, um, but that's just how the title of her book goes in so many words. But yeah, I checked it out a couple of weeks ago. I actually am doing this review on May 5th. Um, I'll be seeing Guardians of the Galaxy tonight, by the way. Cannot fucking wait. I've been waiting so long for that movie, literally since the first one came out, because I love the first movie so much. Um, but back on track here. So, um, like I said, the book came out right after WrestleMania. so almost exactly a month ago. Um, I think a couple days after WrestleMania. And I had the tough choice a couple of months ago, at the onset of 2017, of whether to buy the physical hard copy of Justin Roberts' book or AJ Lee's book. I went with Justin Roberts' book. I still got to read that at some point. I just don't have enough time to sit down and read. But then what I soon found out, what I have yet to do, so as I've probably talked about here on the show before, I'm a big fan of Jason Solomon's podcast, The Solomon Monster Sounds Off, and he has this awesome free trial uh, with Audible. And you can get a free audiobook for free, for obviously, for 30 days. And I had yet to do it. I've been aware of it for so long. I'm just not a huge, prior to that point, prior to a month ago, I wasn't a big audiobook guy. I wouldn't really, I would just kind of listen to my other podcasts, like Jericho's podcast or his podcast, Stone Cold podcast or whatever, just listen to music. I wouldn't listen to audiobooks. I've never really tried it before, nor did I even really try the trial. So when I found out about it, I'm like, you know what? AJ's book is available on Audible. So, I'm, you know, I'm like, eh, fuck it. We'll give it a shot. So if you want to do the same, uh, go to, I think it's audibletrial.com backslash Solomonster. I might be wrong. But if you want to get a free trial and help support him in the process, please do. Go to that link, uh, audibletrial.com slash Solomonster. You got to sign up. You got to put in your credit card information. But they won't charge you. I canceled right after I finished the book, and I finished the book like in five days. Like I downloaded it on a Sunday. I think the Sunday after I came back from Mania, I'm pretty sure, or maybe the Sunday after that. I don't know, but like a week or two after I came back from Mania, I think it was the week after Mania. I'm not sure, but anyway, so I finished it literally within five days. I didn't think I would. I thought it would take like a month or so, um, but I listened to it like while I was walking into class and while I was eating lunch and shit. I would just literally sit down in my bed for like an hour and listen to the book. And then I finished that on Good Friday um, when I was just sitting down, hanging out. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and finish the book. I only got an hour left. I had a three-hour drive home from uh, from school on Good Friday. So I finished the whole good chunk of it then. But yeah, it only took me five days. So if you're like me, you always have your headphones in. Audiobooks are great. I just can't justify right now paying 15 bucks or whatever it is for a month, for like a, for a subscription to Audible. So I canceled immediately after that was over. But if you want to do the same, I implore that you do. It's an awesome opportunity. But... Getting down to the heart of the matter here, AJ Lee's book, um, obviously, as you could probably tell from the fact they scrambled to get the book, um, it's just a lot easier for me to listen to it as opposed to sit down and physically read it at this point in time with how busy I am currently. Um, but I really wanted to check it out. I heard nothing but good things about it. Um, I've been a big AJ Lee fan since she arrived in WWE seven years ago on the that third season of NXT. Just fell in love with her from the start. Became a bigger fan down the line when she did the whole crazy stuff with Daniel Bryan and whatever. And the thing about it is that this book is like, it's not even a wrestling book. Like I feel, and I've been asked all the time, like, oh, do you read? I'm like, yeah, I do when I have the time. Like, what do you read? Uh, wrestler autobiographies? But it's nothing to be ashamed of. Like, you're still fucking reading. You're still learning something. I find wrestling autobiographies because that's what I'm passionate about to be absolutely interesting and intriguing, whatever, compelling and engaging. So anyway, um, AJ Lee's book, though, is not a wrestling autobiography, I would classify it. It's not like she waits for the final, like, two chapters, chapters to talk about her wrestling career. But a lot of her book, like, the better half of her book, the, the better part of her book, is talking about her upbringing, which is fucking, you know, fascinating. It's fucking fascinating. And if you listen to any of her promos back in the day, like, none of this was made up. Like, when she would talk about, even in NXT, like, when she won the Davis Championship and all this other shit... She would talk about growing up and sleeping in cars when she was 10 years old and how much it meant to her to get to WWE, let alone to do all the things that she did. And she, that was not bullshit. She was not lying when she said that she lived in a car. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but AJ Lee had a really, AJ Mendez, uh, whatever you want to call her again, the sweetheart, she had a really, really, really rough upbringing. Um, her family was very, very, when I say poor, they were fucking poor, like dirt poor. Um, they had to move several times. They borrowed money from pretty much every relative they can get in contact with before they just 
cut them off and they moved, they literally moved into one of their relatives' house. I mean, I'll tell some stories here very briefly. Like, they moved in, like, their uncle's house or something like that. And after, like, not milking them dry of their money, but they were using up, like, they were taking advantage of their relatives and they couldn't pay them back just because they were so poor. The family up and left. Like, they just literally left one day and left the house to the to AJ's family. They weren't there for that long because, again, they couldn't pay for shit. They couldn't pay for, like, heat or for gas. Sometimes electricity and cable and stuff. But other than that, that was about it. But they got kicked out of there several times. They did have to literally live in their car. AJ, her two siblings, her brother, her sister. And um, she was kind of like the runt of the family. And then her two parents who fought a lot. And her mother was bipolar. So the title comes into play. Again, if you haven't heard about him, she's been all over social media. She's talked about it in all these press conferences and stuff like that. Um, that AJ Lee does suffer from mental health issues like bipolar disorder. And it's fascinating to learn about like people that have gone through this and what they suffer through. And it's not something that really goes away. Um, but if you go through that currently or if you've dealt with if you've dealt with that personally or know someone who has gone through it, it's really, really interesting to check out. Um, and she didn't even know about it until like she was like well into her twenties. Like she talked about going to college. I think she went to NYU, I'm pretty sure, for like um not graphic design, maybe being a, a film major, I think. Um, but then she had to, she had to leave after six months and she had to like ration her food because she couldn't pay for anything and she had to leave because she couldn't pay for tuition. Then she was back out on her own. She was living on her own. She talks about wrestling. That was the only thing she ever wanted to do um, growing up and how she kind of bonded with her brother who kind of bullied her a lot and harassed her. But the only really thing that, that, that brought them together was wrestling. And she eventually obviously fulfilled that dream on the indie circuit. And again, just making very little money. And she talks about all the health issues she's had when her house got broken into one day, when she didn't go over to a relative's house, when they wanted her to go with her on like Easter or something like that. But yeah, it was again, really eye opening to hear about these experiences. Like, holy shit, that's fucking crazy. And you really do not know what you have until you hear stuff like this, until you hear people who have been to absolute rock bottom and come out, you know, intact, have come out in one piece, have come out better than ever, stronger than ever. Uh, stronger than death, as my Matt Hardy raced, my wrist bracelet will tell you. But um, yeah, again, her her WWE stuff is not not brief. She does go into detail. She goes into enough detail. I'll say that much. Like she doesn't spend the entire book talking about her WWE thing. And really, she was there for only on the main roster for five years. I mean, that that sounds like a long time, but like really, what, how much of that time was she really doing much of note? Like she was in NXT. She was in the main roster for like a year before she really did anything of a note with Daniel Bryan. She talked about that, the whole crazy storyline. It's like typical WWE, giving this girl a, a bipolar, like a crazy storyline when she actually had ties to that in real life with like bipolar disorder. Like that's fucking messed up. Knowing the company, that's, su that's such a typical Vince McMahon WWE thing to do. But anyway, the fact that she wasn't comfortable with it, but she still did it anyway and mastered it, which is amazing. But she talks about that. The stuff with Caitlyn. She puts over Caitlyn huge throughout the book. She talks briefly, which I was very interested to hear that she talked about. I was I was wondering, I was very curious to see if she would talk about her relationship with CM Punk, which started up around 2012 when she first came up with the main roster and then kind of took off from there, how they were like best friends to, kick, to start off with. And she talks about love and she talks about how she never really thought for, for a lot of people. She says something that really resonated with me because I kind of already believed it anyway was that for people that getting married should not be the, the be-all, end-all goal. Maybe finding someone is, but you are entirely capable of accomplishing things in your life by yourself, which I completely believe in. So when I heard that, I'm like, preach, preach, AJ. Um, but anyway, she talks, <clears throat> excuse me, she talks about having weddings and marriage and all that other shit. Not being the be-all, end-all. Like, if you don't get married, then who fucking cares, you know? Um, which, again, I completely believe in. They just kind of got married just because they kind of felt like they were in that right place um, at that time in, in 2014 when they got married. And, I, I again, I listened to the audiobook. I think the actual book has, like, pictures and stuff, which is adorable. I love punk. I love AJ, so I think they're a great couple. But, again, that's just me. But, yeah, she talks about that. Again, she doesn't go into too much detail. It kind of closes up quickly on the um, her retirement from WWE. And I think she started writing the book right after she left. So she doesn't really go into too much detail what she's been doing since. I think she's been writing the book in the two years since she left WWE. So she hasn't really been doing a lot other than like charity stuff and whatever. And she hasn't like done indies or anything. I don't think she would. 
She loved wrestling. She still likes wrestling, I think. I think she said she might be back at some point. Never seen ever, you know, the typical wrestler response. Um, but yeah, just really interesting stories. So don't go into this book expecting like a, a, a be all, you know, a tell all book about WWE. She goes into a lot of interesting stories about how she was told by an unnamed, unnamed producer who we all know is John Laurinaitis that basically told her that she wasn't fuckable enough, which is such bullshit. She talks about the women's revolution, but she kind of started it to, to be honest with you. I mean, she was the first woman to be on a pay-per-view poster in several years. She was the first woman to be the general manager of a show, other than like Vicky Guerrero, but as a wrestler, be like a, a top-notch authority figure, a main player in, in main roster storylines in many, many years. The first woman to do this and to do that and to win at WrestleMania and all that other stuff. And she really accomplished it all. Like when she retired, other than missing the boat and feuding with like Bailey and Charlotte and Sasha, other than that stuff, she didn't miss a whole, uh, you know, a whole hell of a lot. She kind of left at the right time. Um, in her career, and her mind, and whatever. So anyway, long story short, it's a great fucking book. Um, if you could pick it up, if you have the time to like sit down and read, unlike me, unfortunately, not that, not that that's a bad thing. I wish I had more time to read. But um, if you can do that, buy the book, the physical copy. I love collecting books. I just don't have the place to put them right now. So the audio book I thought was great. Um, like I said earlier, check out audibletrial.com. I think is the right link. audibletrial.com slash solomonster to get a 30 free day trial. And I think you can keep the book no matter what. I'm about to delete the app as soon as I'm done filming this video. But I think you can keep the book no matter what because I think you still have your account but you won't be charged after a month from what I understand. But um, yeah, whether you're an AJ Lee fan or not, whether you're, you're a wrestling fan or not, it's a great fucking book. She deserves to be a uh, New York Times bestseller which I'm pretty sure she accomplished not too long ago. So again, check out the book whether it's an audio book, you read the book, whatever. I give it to you a thumbs up. Really, really enjoyed it. Definitely up there in terms of the, uh, in terms of being one of the more compelling, engaging books I've read slash listened to in uh, in recent years. So, check it out when you can. So, uh, yeah, I do book reviews on the channel from time to time. I've done like one a year <laughs> so far here. On the, <coughs> excuse me, here on the channel. Um, last summer it was the Jericho book. The summer before that was the uh, the summer before that was the Hulk Hogan book. So hopefully it won't be long before I do my next book review, whether it be Daniel Bryan's book or Justin Roberts' book. Like I said, I have it right here. I got Pat Patterson's book for Easter a couple of weeks ago. So when I have more time, when I'm done with college in a couple of weeks, hopefully I can uh, crank out more book reviews here on the channel. But I do other reviews here on the random video blog. I do top five lists. I talk about my favorite, you know, I review just random shit, books, movies, um, favorite shit from pay-per-views and other wrestling-related material. So check that stuff out. I'm about to go watch Guardians of the Galaxy. I cannot fucking wait again. I'm super, super pumped and waiting literally over like a thousand days to see this movie. So I'm super fucking pumped to see Guardians in literally mere hours. So that being said, guys, enjoy Cinco de Mayo. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'm Graham Jesus Matthews, and I'll catch you guys down the road.